Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video clip I want to show with you how you can fairly easily determine the dissociation constant, uh, which is very often called Ki, of a competitive inhibitor. Now usually when you do inhibition experiments you um, take your substrate and you measure the corresponding rate of the enzyme and you use different substrate concentrations and you measure the corresponding rate and from these data you usually get a, a Km, you get a Vmax and you get Vmax over Km and you do that in the absence of the inhibitor and then you do it in the presence of the inhibitor you do exactly the same experiment you take your substrate concentration and you measure the corresponding um, uh, rate you get a Km apparent so that's with the inhibitor you get a Vmax apparent uh, with the inhibitor and you get Vmax apparent over Km apparent and you do that for different uh, inhibitor concentrations so something like that and you get uh, quite a large data set which eventually gives you all the information that you need in order to get Ka. So um, what you then do with this data set is that you it requires you to have all these data so uh, for each inhibitor concentration you check different S and uh, measure the corresponding uh, rate. What happens if you did your experiment at a fixed substrate concentration, let's say at this fixed substrate concentration, and you only have the data for this fixed substrate concentration? Well, you still can do something with that, uh, and uh, this uh, video shows you exactly how to do it. So let's say we have a fixed substrate concentration, and we get the rate at this particular substrate concentration, let's call this V. Now we do our inhibitor uh, experiment with the same fixed substrate concentration with inhibitor and we get a V observed. And again we do that for higher concentration and we get another V observed and so on and so forth. So we get a number of different V observed for always the same substrate concentration. That's very important that we always have the same substrate concentration. Do a secondary plot. Well, first of all, what would your uh, plot look like? So if you did a line weaver Berg plot with a competitive inhibitor, uh, so here you would have 1 over V versus 1 over S. You would probably get this without the inhibitor and you would get something like that with inhibitor with increasing inhibitor concentration and the characteristic of a competitive inhibitor is that the 1 over v max which is this point here 1, one over v max that stays constant for all inhibitor concentrations so you would get this but you get different gradients km over v max and what you do with these uh, Km over Vmax gradients in a secondary plot or in a Dixon plot, you use these Km over Vmax and you plot your inhibitor concentration and Km apparent over Vmax apparent. And what you should get is a straight line 
and it is uh, intersect with the uh, uh, x-axis gives you minus ki, which is the dissociation constant. So that works very well, but it requires you. So what do we get? Now we have our inhibitor concentration and we get our rates uh, at this fixed I should write this at fixed substrate concentration. So we start here with zero, we get V, and then we increase the inhibitor concentration, and we get some observed V, like that. It's important that we have this, and I'll show you in a minute why. So we get the different V observed here. So how do we use this information now for uh, finding out Ki? And there is a very uh, simple plot, and the equation for this, basically for this plot, is V minus V observed divided by V observed. Now that looks a little bit complicated, but it's not that complicated actually for uh, this kind of plot, and you can do it more or less automatically in a, a spreadsheet program. V minus V observed divided by V observed equals Km. That is your Km without the inhibitor, and you need to find that before you get started. Divided by S plus Km times 1 over Ki times inhibitor concentration. Now, what you will see is that this actually gives you the equation for a straight line. So this is y equals mx. So this one here is m. And it contains the Ki. And uh, this S here, that is your fixed substrate concentration. And the Km, that is the Km that you determine for your enzyme without the inhibitor. And the nice thing is that your gradient here contains this Ki. Uh, so therefore, all we need to find is the gradient for this, and this one here gives you uh, a constant number, because Km doesn't change, and you have done everything at the fixed substrate concentration. So then we can very easily calculate Ki from this. So how does this look like in reality? So here I have done my experiment with different inhibitor concentrations, and it's very important that I have uh, uh, an experiment without the inhibitor. So that's this one here. And here are my rates. Now this one here, this is my rate without the inhibitor. This is my V. This is the rate without the inhibitor. And these are all the observed uh, uh, rates corresponding to the inhibitor concentration. What I can do now is I can very easily calculate this V, the, the, the next column, V uh, minus V observed divided by V observed. So what I take here in this one here is uh, 0 0.0745. That's my V minus, and that would be my 0 0.0745 divided by 0 0.0745. So that's for the first row. For this row, I would get 0 0.0745, that's my V, minus 0 0.011 divided by 0 0.011. And so I get these data, and you can very easily do that in a spreadsheet. Uh, so let's see how this looks like.
So here the spreadsheet has uh, basically done it for me and I've got my V minus V uh, observed divided by V observed uh, numbers and I've got my inhibitors. And now uh, all I need to do is I plot I plot my V minus V observed divided by V observed versus the inhibitor concentration. And the inhibitor concentration, obviously, we have here in millimolar. And here, the unit for, for this part here, there is no unit because it cancels uh, each other out. And what we should get then, obviously, is a, a graph that goes through the origin because our first data point here is zero and we ideally should get a straight line where <clears throat> the gradient of this straight line this m is given by km divided by s plus km times 1 over ki. The rates were given as OD per minute, and we didn't have to do anything in terms of converting them into millimolar per minute or anything like that. Uh, we just use these OD per minute that then gives us these ratios here of the V minus V observed divided by V observed. So with this kind of so I've plotted this graph here, and we get a fairly straight line with uh, these data. We note it's not exactly going through zero, but it's, uh, I think it's uh, close enough uh, going through zero. And here is what we want. Here is our gradient. So we have m equals 0 0.13, let's say one, 0 0.13. And this is Km divided by S plus Km times 1 over Ki. So all we need to do is we need to solve this equation for Ki. And uh, if we have our Km and S, then we can make life easier. Uh, I think in this particular, in this particular case, uh, Km, which we found out with our first plot, Km was 18.84 millimolar and S was done at 7.48 millimolar. And then we can very easily calculate that. Uh, I've, I've done that and we get um, 0 0.715. Uh, so that is our, um, that, that, that is this term here. So we get 0 0.13 equals 0 0.715. Uh, divided by Ki, and uh, we can solve this for Ki. So Ki equals one, 0 0.715 divided by 0 0.13. And uh, if I've done this correctly, we get Ki equals 5.5. Now, what are the units for Ki? Well, obviously, the units for Ki are the same as uh, the units that we have here. So, it's Ki would be 5.5 millimolar here as a dissociation constant for this uh, competitive inhibitor. The important thing and the really nice thing with this kind of plot is that you don't have to convert your rates here. Uh, the rates, if you remember, with this kind of plot, you can determine your dissociation constant of a competitive inhibitor uh, 
Very easily, when you do your experiments at a fixed substrate concentration. So this is a huge advantage over uh, using these uh, secondary Dixon plots. I hope this makes sense and thank you for watching.